Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, let's talk about uh, reduce function in Clojure today. A uh, couple reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, it is one of the most uh, powerful functions available uh, in Clojure Core to work with collections. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, beginners uh, struggle quite a lot with this function and fully understand uh, how it works. So that's the, the purpose of this, this video, to demonstrate um, the power of reduce. Uh, good news is that, uh, from my experience, most of the time when you uh, write closure code, you can work with simpler functions most of the time, like map, filter, remove, uh, etc. Uh, everything available in the closure core. Um, but in some cases, when you need to do some kind of transformation and filtering and maybe aggregation in the same in in one function in one go. Um, you basically have reduce as your option. Uh, so I prepared an array of elements, um, some fruits, vegetables, and a donut uh, that will try uh, write some reduce function on top of that. So first of all, um, if you want something simple, like uh, if you want double elements in that array, for example, uh, you can do something with map, right? You don't need to do reduce here. So you can do some partial, uh, partial repeat uh, two, let's say, and then put an array here. And if we evaluate that, we see this uh, pairs of elements. So you can flatten that with mapcat, for example, a single list. Then there's a nice function like called frequencies. Frequencies of array will give us frequencies of each element inside. Um, and you can do filtering, let's say filter, and then uh, as set um, implements the function interface, if you put some elements in a set here and put an array, uh, we'll have only elements uh, from this set as a result. And the opposite could be done with remove, if we want to remove those elements instead. So this kind of thing, simple uh, filtering, transformations, etc. Uh, but what about some aggregations? And uh, later we'll have aggregations and transformations probably at, at the same at the same time. So uh, reduce, right? And uh, in some languages, uh, reduce is kind of like the main function available if you want to write some functional um, style programming, right? And the other day I've seen an example uh, complaining that the reduce in JavaScript to some elements in array uh, is bad code because it's hard to read. Um, I still think it's not the case. Uh, it depends on the language syntax, etc. In Clojure, if you have an array like one, two, three, four, and if you want to sum that, you can do reduce on that uh, plus as a function and you can provide initial value or you can just omit that because uh, it doesn't matter if you remove this initial value, these two elements will be the first pair uh, to run the plus function on. But on the other hand, if you want to uh, provide some non-zero initial value, let's say like minus 10, uh, you can do it with, with this original accumulator value. Uh, but in closure, I would avoid reduce for this simple uh, sum operation because on the other hand you can do something like uh, um, apply plus to a vector and this will give you the result. Uh, but let's dive in finally into uh, like semantics of reduce function. So let's do it here, reduce and we go inside to check the docs. So there are two versions as we've already seen. One is with two arguments and one is with three arguments. Uh, the only difference is that uh, you can pass any value here as initial one uh, and then in this case this function f will be called or this original value and the first element of the uh, collection and then 
it will be called on the result of applying f to these two first pair and the second element in the collection. The only difference here is that in the first iteration you'll pick two elements from the collection, apply function f, and everything else stays the same. So let's uh, do it here. Let's create some fn. So as we saw, um, this function f uh, should uh, accept two arguments. And uh, let's call the first one uh, accumulator and the second one just like an element. And let's return the accumulator from, from this uh, step. Then let's say our accumulator initial value is zero and the result is array. So if we run this, we obviously have zero as the result because we do nothing. We just pass the original accumulator through the chain of the calls. Um, I have a helper macro or like, like this specific symbol uh, to help me with print statements. And if I do this, I can print uh, next form. So let's call this once again. And now we can see how it, how the, how our function was called through the steps. So we got accumulate zero and we have first element, then accumulate zero, and then we have the second element, etc. So now, um, Let's let's change our accumulator from zero to an uh, empty list, and then if we call uh, conj on um, on the list, and we we can basically add elements like this uh, to a vector, right? So here, uh, let's say instead of returning accumulator, we want uh, conj. Oh my god, conj accumulator and the element. Uh, so we now basically rebuilding the original array. Let's call this once again. And now we have our vector as the result. Uh, and if we go th through the steps, now you can see that our accumulator is empty. And then we added first element, second element, etc. So it's keep growing, right? Uh, what else we can do is, let's say we want map and we want to reproduce the uh, frequencies function. So now uh, our our map will be um, let's say uh, update and uh, it will be accumulator. Then we have our element and increment. But I'm not sure if it will work with nil. No. Yeah, it won't work with nil. So here. Uh, we can do something like um, count and if um, if count we do increment on count or we return nil. I think there are smarter ways of doing that for sure but uh, for now th that will work. Let's run this. Um, yeah, sorry, I need to remove this, but I want our array at the end. So now we can see, um, it shouldn't be zero, it should be one, right? If we haven't seen this element in the map, it should be one. So now this is our result. And as we can see how it grows, it was empty map. Then we got one apple. We put this frequency here. And then we um, actually just go through through these elements and uh, add them into the map and incrementing the count. And as you can see, the, the power of re reduce is that this accumulator could be anything, really. Uh, it could contain multiple things. We can also track our steps, for example. So um, let's say... We want something like uh, here it will be uh, let's say steps with an empty array and result as a map so here now we can do something like uh, 
we can do let, right? And we can do keys and it will be steps. Uh, let's call it steps, right? So our new uh, accumulator after this reduce, we want uh, to reconstruct the same thing. So steps will be uh, conj uh, steps and we want to add a new vector there. It will contain accumulator and the element. Uh, that's the current step here. And then the result will be uh, this, the same update that we're doing here. So uh, instead of update accumulate, we want update result. And yeah, that's it, I think. So let's run this thing. <coughs> and yeah, as we can see, we now have a lot of things. It's not what it's not quite what I want. So yeah, it, it shouldn't be um, accumulator here. It should be result. So we want to yeah, this is what I want. Um, so our steps we can clearly see um, the input right here. So initial empty map, then we got an apple, then we have the next element. So we kind of track the, this entire step process through the reduce, and then we also calculate the result. So if we want, uh, we can just get the result from here. We can also have the steps available. Um, it, it is like a bit of synthetic example, right? Uh, but my point was to show that you with this accumulator, it can hold uh, whatever data structure you want and you can apply whatever transformations you want here. So if we want, for example, uh, now we kind of like reproduce the, the reduce um, the frequencies function, right? But what if we want to filter at the same time, for example? So we can do uh, something like... <clears throat> um, Let's say if uh, contains, and let's say we want our want to filter our donut out, right? So we can do this. Uh, contains element. We just want to return the result, and in the opposite opposite case, we do the increment, and let's call this and see if that works. So now we, we don't see our donut in the in the output aggregation anymore. So to recap uh, what we learned is if we want to use the reduce, uh, the last argument is always the collection you want to reduce. Uh, the second argument will be a function of two uh, arguments. The first one will be accumulator, that's what passed through the steps of the reduce, and then uh, current element from array, right? Here you do the logic, um, somehow add uh, element to accumulator and uh, return return accumulator and this will works it will take first and second element uh, from the array and apply this function in this case if you want a different initial value of accumulate accumulator you pass it here it could be anything you want you can pass a map you can pass a vector it shouldn't be it it couldn't be it could be not empty like a vector of couple of elements if you need it, it could be just a primitive integer string, whatever you want. Uh, this function defines how this initial value of accumulator and the element from the array works together. So you can produce the next uh, result, the next accumulator version. And that's it for today. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, leave comments and please like and, like and subscribe. Uh, see you next video. Bye bye.